learn something. We're not content with just the headlines or the typical talking points. It's a refreshingly honest conversation about what's going on. It's about connecting our community and doing something to really make a difference. We're taking today's stories and bringing positivity back. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the sun is out. Give it to me, vitamin D, basking in it. Welcome to Take 5. You guys, I'm in a t-shirt and it's April. I absolutely love it and fun fact, we just tied a record 76 in Seattle. Come with me inside. This is the fun show. In fact, yesterday, Michelle Lee had the big information, the big, the big hello, the big welcome, which she is with child, <laughs> <laughs> talking child. to us a little bit about infertility, what the state is doing. She'll get into that, but this is the wonderful <laughs> Michelle Lee. You've got Christopher Cashman, Angela Poe Russell. Good afternoon, you three. Good afternoon. We want to remind everyone you can text us right now at 206-448-4545. We have a lot of topics. Did I say that too fast? 448 Four five four five. Good. You know what? The best thing to do yeah. is just put it in your phone. Nobody knows as a contact. Numbers. You're right. Yeah. yeah take just five. take five. Yeah. I don't even know my mom's number anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> no kidding. Hey, we were talking about our very own game changer today, by the way. This woman, Michelle Lee. Mm -hmm. so very awesome. exciting. <laughs> uh, she made a big announcement yesterday. Did you guys see it? I saw it. This week also happens to be the week that my husband and I are closing a chapter on our infertility journey. And that is because this week we are finally able to announce that we are having a baby. Yay! She shared the big exciting announcement yesterday live on the show. Um, this has been almost, what, a decade in the making for yeah. you. So it's yeah. wonderful, hugely emotional. Uh, today we're going to continue the conversation as it is National Infertility Awareness Week. So yes. we're going to be talking a lot about this, a lot of people sharing your struggles. Uh, and we're even going to show you some new technology that maybe it will wipe that right out, maybe, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. what was it yeah. like to watch that just now? Uh, embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, I'm so grateful for all of the texts. I actually spent a good portion of my afternoon trying to respond to everybody because yesterday I just was overwhelmed. I couldn't. So thank you. Um, but it's hard to watch yourself on TV, especially when you're crying. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> cry, though. It was totally I think good. we did miss one big opportunity. We should have said where you're being registered because oh, we got like 800 text messages. I mean, come on. Yeah. You start stocking up the nursery. Not registered Anyways. yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if your little one will play soccer one day, but this is pretty re relevant if you're a parent and you have kids in sports. There was a big study that came out today. And so we put out the question, is it time to end heading in soccer, particularly Ooh. youth soccer? Ooh. That was, um, there was some research that came out today, so we're going to be taking a deep dive into that. And we'd love to get your input, so you can text us on our Take 5 line that Michelle gave you a moment ago. And heading is when the ball? Hits yes, it's when, no, it's not the collision. It's actually when you intentionally, as a player, you head the ball as a pass or a maneuver. Oh. Um, yeah, so I should have explained that. No, 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 no that's good. good. We're going to get I, into A lot of people it. probably already knew that. Yeah. I just didn't play soccer, so. You're a Got baller, it. basketball. Yeah. <laughs> should we ask them, in honor of our soccer discussion, that to text us with only their feet? <laughs> no, no, that's too much. That's too much. That's unsanitary. Well, there's actually a lot going on today. We want to get you caught up here. Uh, five interesting stories happening today. This is a quick look at what we call the Fast Five. Here it comes. First representative Pramala Jayapal is standing with 200 domestic workers and farmers uh, working, and they are rallying there for safety and dignity in D.C. today. They are standing up against discrimination, harassment, and assault women face, particularly women of color. And the use of e-cigarettes has skyrocketed in schools and mm. even middle schools. What? One of the most popular vaping devices is the Jewel Pod. Maybe you've seen those. It contains as much nicotine as a pack of cigarettes. And today, the FDA announced a nationwide undercover crackdown on retailers selling the devices to minors. Come on, kids. A standing ovation for the man credited with stopping a shooter inside a Nashville area Waffle House. Lawmakers leapt to their feet to cheer on James Shaw Jr. today. They also honored him with a resolution calling Shaw a hero. And Alki Beach is getting an upgrade. Seattle Parks and Rex replaced all seven fire rings along the beach. They've now got lockable lids, which should help keep those uh, prevent fires after the park closes there for the night. And you can give Amazon permission to enter your house and now your car. Wow. That's right. Today, Amazon launched an expansion of Amazon Key that lets packages be delivered right to your car. You huh. may be wondering why. Uh, one customer says it's perfect for hiding gifts. Could be for the kids. Could be for that loved one. Uh, and also, of course, to avoid those porch pirates. Yeah. 
Oh, by the way, oh. you can text the word FAST, F-A-S-T, to our number there on your screen, 206-448-4545, if you want more information on any of those stories. I should mention with the Amazon key here, I wrote this down, you do have to be a Prime member if you want to have okay. stuff delivered to your car. You also have to have a GM for now, a GM or a Volvo that's no older than 2015, uh, so you got to have OnStar or the uh, they call it Volvo Call. Yeah. Wait, you can only there. have two types of cars right now? Well, because they've got to have that electronic lock. They have to get a code from you to be able to unlock your car and get in. Either way, I'm holding out for Amazon Pre, which is where they deliver stuff before you knew you needed it. <laughs> You know it's coming. You know it's coming. So the second you run out of toilet paper, there's a knock at the door. The well, Amazon, that would be convenient. Right? It's got to be coming. And you were shaking your head like this doesn't well, sound Well, because appealing. you know what? I got broken into. I feel like you, as soon as you move to Seattle, your car gets broken into. That's like you're welcome to Seattle. And don't hit welcome. me. No, <laughs> you're I, I, yeah. You know, I, so I don't, want, I don't want that. And it's weird. It's just one more person going through your belongings, right? Yeah. Whether it's in your right. house or within but, your car. I mean, it does keep the porch pirates, which I agree, yeah. but I'd rather have a friend pick up my package somewhere else. I know they're in there. You just you don't know, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Well, I gotta give them credit for having the ideas, and mm -hmm. I love the, your yes. idea of being able to anticipate, which Free. is I guess, <laughs> those ads they Prime give you. Prime trade. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, look. Take a look at this picture. I saw this and, and wanted to share it with you. Russell Wilson from the Seahawks. He posted this picture. He took his daughter to work this week. Sienna. He posted this picture on Twitter, Twitter, and he wrote, "Spending time with my angel Cece today at my West to East office. My baby girl is the best." And by the way, Sienna's going to be a year old, April 28th. It's already <gasps> been a year. What? Ah, but wait. she is so doggone cute. Oh, my God. You think he'd still do that if it was Sunday, game day? Take her out on the field. Bring Look, your daughter to work day. who would play with the baby Bjorn on <laughs> it. Russell. Would be, yeah. Absolutely. It would be Russell Wilson yeah. for sure. All right. Time to embarrass Michelle some more. <laughs> yeah. Ready for this? So remember yesterday, Michelle shared some very exciting news right here on Take 5. She and her husband are expecting a baby. She shared their personal journey uh, with infertility and help shed some light on how far our state needs to go in order to help people who want to build their families. Fertility is a disease. It's not a choice. It impacts millions of people. It impacts 150,000 people right here in Washington. Yet it is still not covered by insurance here, unless, that is, you're a veteran who had combat injuries, and even that's about to run out. Uh, 15 other states we know, like Massachusetts, Illinois and Hawaii have all mandated that insurance covers infertility, which again is a disease. So the question I ask, why isn't Washington? Why is Washington behind? So this is National Infertility Awareness Week. Michelle is here now with a special guest from Resolve, the National Infertility Association. Hey, Michelle. Hi, so I have Annie Quo with us. Thank you, Annie. I was waiting for you guys to do a round of applause, but I guess I wasn't going to get it. Um, Annie has a personal story as well, but she is really known around this area for her advocacy. So, first of all, can you tell us what Resolve does? Yes, Resolve is the National Infertility Association, and we want to empower Americans who struggle to build their families to find resolution through inspiring them to act, finding community and support, um, being united by advocacy, and also um, building awareness around the disease. How do you build awareness and how do you change kind of like what lawmakers are doing? You know, I know we had a grade that went from like D to B and that was a lot of because of what right. you guys did, so. Um, in 2015, I went to my first advocacy day. There's a really small team of Washington State advocates and at that time, um, Resolve had assigned Washington State the score, a fertility score of a D. And that's based on criteria of how many patients there are in Washington State, how many people struggle with it versus mm -hmm. how much support via support groups and, and fertility professionals there are. Um, through the expansion of support groups, we went from 1 to 12 in less than three years. Our fertility score went up to a B from a D. But the real leap is going to be now. To get to an A, it's going to take a village. It's going to take both social change and systemic change. And that means what, like mandating insurance coverage? That's part of it. It's okay. making, um, it's making uh, uh, infertility access and raising um, awareness also increasing <laughs> access to all the different means that people can build their families. Um, uh, it's opening that door so that people can do whatever they want to do so that they can have their dream. Okay, one last question. How can people get involved if they want to help? People can get involved by contacting their lawmakers by calling them, 
writing to them, even better meeting with their lawmakers, both in Olympia and Washington, D.C. The more effort that you make, the more impact that it makes. Okay. Um, and so they can do that by going to getting options at resolve.org slash advocacy day. Okay. The, uh, clicking on um, uh, a call to action and also a tab called uh, for friends and family. We are going to put that in the Five Hive too. So right. we'll talk about the Five Hive if you're just new to the show and you don't know what that is. But Annie, you have changed so many lives in this area. I have so many people who thank you for your thank advocacy. You. So well, thank it takes you so a village much. and it will take a village <laughs> to get to an A. So thank you for your support. We're going to get there. Yeah, we Thank will. you, Annie. Thank you. All right, let's go outside now to Chris and Jordan. What are you guys doing? Hey, Michelle. Yeah, hi. Thank you. Uh, well, selfishly, we're soaking up the summer, like Grace. the summer preview here. But uh, those of you who are friends of mine on Facebook, you might have seen my post this morning. I got to spend the breakfast hour uh, speaking and raising money uh, with a group called Encompass. Great people, the Rise and Thrive Breakfast. I was lucky enough to help host an event for them this morning. Uh, Encompass Northwest, they're a nonprofit that partners with families to build healthy foundations for kids. Uh, they mostly focus on kids eight and younger. They promote discovery, creativity, social problem solving, as well as emotional, cognitive, and physical development. You know, parenting, I have to tell you, uh, can be very scary, especially oh, yeah. if and when you notice, wait, maybe my kid has fallen a little bit behind the curve here. That's where Encompass comes in, and they've been doing great, great work. Up till now, though, they have been limited by their reach, which is the greater Snoqualmie Valley area. That is until now. Okay, so this right here is our mobile therapy unit, and it's basically a therapeutic lab on wheels. So this is basically a PCIT lab. PCIT is a evidence-based um, therapeutic treatment for parents and children, and it stands for Parent-Child Interaction Therapy. And what makes PCIT so valuable is because the parent and the child are in one section of the PCIT lab playing, and the coach is on the other side. The parent has a bug in the ear, and the coach is coaching them through learning play therapy skills, things that really tighten up that relationship between the parent and child when it's been strained by oppositional behaviors, disruptive behaviors, you know, poor emotional regulation within kids. And so we kind of teach them the skills in real time. What we found was it was difficult for parents to get to our lab in North Bend. So we thought, why not bring a, a van to Washington State? Um, we looked out for some grants and we were awarded a $100,000 grant from Washington Women's Foundation to purchase the van and outfit it as a clinical PCIT lab. What this allows us to do is bring the van to various locations in the Snoqualmie Valley and Greater East Side so families can get to us easier. So we want to bring these services to the underserved areas that really would benefit from PCIT. That's cool. Yeah, very cool morning. Uh, some great people there. Former Mariner Bill Kruger was there. Okay. Former Seahawk Ray Roberts was there as a speaker as well. So a lot of great people coming together. Encompass is doing great work. Maybe that spoke to you or somebody you yeah. know and you want to reach out, encompassnw.org, support them and the great work that they are doing. Good. In the meantime, we'll send it inside to Angela. Yeah, thanks guys. You know, we put the question out today, is it time to end heading in youth soccer? And if you still want to weigh in, you can text us at 206-448-4545. Those of you newer to the sport, heading is the term for when a soccer player hits the ball with their head. Now this question is in response to some research that came out. It was out of Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York, and that is the focus of today's Deep Dive. It's a segment here on the show where we just dive a little deeper into a news headline, a topic, or issue. The main takeaway from this study is that we should be just as concerned about heading as we are about collisions, if not more so. The research here revealed that players who did the most heading had worse brain function than those who had impact because of collisions. Now here are the main things to know about this. There were 308 amateur adult players, mostly men, studied for two weeks. They had to report headings and collisions and then take several neuropsychological tests. The ones with the most number of headings scored worse on verbal learning, verbal memory, and attention. And it's important to note these were adult study, but let's face it, thousands of young people in our area play soccer and their brains are still developing. And as a parent of one, this had me questioning, is this the right sport for her? Should I prevent her from doing this? So today we tracked down the lead scientist on this research to get his bottom line on whether this is yet more evidence that we need to end this practice of heading. And here's what he had to say. It's only the people with the most extreme amount of heading 
who have the risk of cognitive impairment. There's some amount of heading that's likely safe for most people. Dr. Lipton says we always focus on concussions, but repeatedly using your head can be just as dangerous long term and you don't have the obvious symptoms that you may have if you have a concussion. The answer, he says, is to figure out how much heading is safe and the same way that baseball has figured out how many pitches a player can throw until they need to rest. So while we wait to find out more, the Washington Youth Soccer Association says their rules follow the national standards, which means no heading for kids 10 and younger. And you know how we got those initial rules? It was parents who actually sued U.S. Youth Soccer and says you guys are being negligent. That's how those rules about 10 and younger came about. So we get more research and see that we don't like where it's going. Parents can always push some more. It's good information. You know, you always hear folks talking about football, right? Yeah. Football oh, this, yeah. football that, head collisions, but you don't think about other sports. Soccer is a big one. Football. Right, yeah. The original football. Right, the original football. And um, I know that we've been hearing a lot more stories about cheerleaders, too, coming and taking tumbles. So I think oh. every sport, you got to have people like this who are just like, hey, is this good for our kids? That's the important thing. Because mm -hmm. when you get into the actual specifics of the sport itself for adults, then people go crazy. No, you can't get rid of heading. This is a tradition. Yeah. But for kids, which is a key point that you pointed out, yeah. is very, very important. Yeah. You know what? I was just thinking, because kids play so much earlier and longer, mm -hmm. and then they also do, like, mm -hmm. traveling teams, you know, that repetitive action is not good. I mean, I'm not saying just the heading part, mm -hmm. but there are so many right. injuries that young oh, yeah. kids are getting now. Oh, so yeah. Totally. You know, my daughter plays sense. about probably three to four times a week. Yeah. yeah and it's year round. There's no break. Um, it's, it's sad. That's why I keep my girls at home wrapped in bubble wrap. <laughs> Good idea. Shelter Safe. them, man. And he really does. <laughs> yeah. <No>. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my uh, gosh. All oh, right. you know what? We've got some texts coming in. We've got in some too. of our texts coming in. We're uh, asking folks about that. You can text us throughout the show. You think, think that, uh, yep, heading's dangerous. They agree with you. Yeah. Way too dangerous. Yikes. <laughs> I'd like to know if anyone thinks that it's not too dangerous. You know, is there anyone out there who disagrees with that? Yeah. Oh, We've got we at got least Greg. one, Greg, we behind the camera. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm sure there's some players who are like, hey, I did this my whole life and I turned out fine. And this researcher did say that some people may be more sensitive to it. It's just mm -hmm. like with anything, right? You, every, someone can smoke mm -hmm, yeah. and not ever have lung yeah. cancer. And, um, but at the end of the day, we still need to do more research. You know, that comparison to baseball and pitching was perfect. I yeah. should also point out that the one guy raised his hand and doesn't have a problem with the heading is Greg and he's a referee. So <laughs> no, I think, those stripes. We'll I think see, we Greg. should figure out and get his perspective coming up a little bit later. Yeah, all right. Oh, well, the we got to move on to the five highs. Go for it. And uh, everybody say it. This is our social community brought together to do good. good I like yes. saying that. I uh, just want to give a shout out to Rachel because she said she is very proud of my very small balcony garden, garden in West Seattle. And then a bunch of people were like, this is such a great use of space. So just wanted to show that. And then Rick. I can show these, sent a bunch of pictures of flowers as well. And I think he was at the Ballard Locks uh, when he sent these in. So we love seeing all the spring pictures, but you know, we really want to see pictures of like your friends, your family. So send those in too. You can join us. You can text Hive to 4484545. Or if you're on Facebook, you can just search for Take Five and it'll bring you there too. Right now, this is a private, or I shouldn't say a private group. This is a closed group. Yeah, somebody asked me about that. They said, what does that mean? I can't join it? No, no. you can join totally just, inclusive. Yeah. It just means we need, want to find a little bit more about you before we just let anyone in. Right. Well, also, because if you know, you're posting something a little more personal, then it's not going to show up in everyone's public feeds. Right. Really, that's what that's about. And you so, can't share can't either. Share you can't share either, which makes it kind of difficult sometimes when we really want to share something. We're but a circle. It's a trust circle. You're <laughs> inside the circle. You can't get outside. So once you're in, you're in. It, it's yeah. a good thing, I think. It's good. Yeah, I mean, it could change if we decide that, you know, it's better to do it one way or the other, but it'll be a democracy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no kidding. All right, hey, coming up next, Dr. Lucy Jones joins us to talk about the big one, how you should prepare for an earthquake or another disaster. And the producer's pick, maybe we'll get to it, maybe we won't. She's the producer, she'll let us know if she wants to put it in there. That and more are coming up. And as we head to break, check it out. Incredible video from Bryce Johnson, a gray whale catching some dinner just 30 feet off the shore of Whidbey Island. Cool.